Hi guys, welcome to another video. How has luxury at YouTube changed over the years? It has changed dramatically since I started watching. Never mind since I started my channel. We used to have reviews and reveals and hauls, what's in my bag, what fits, all of those things that were just about the bag and the luxury item and how to style it, how to use it, and just getting a bit more information. It was like entertainment, but information that might make it useful for you guys out there to make a more informed decision, particularly for those people who do not live near luxury stores and can get their hands on these things readily. But it's changed beyond all recognition. How has it changed? Is this for the better, for the worse? What do we all think about it? Let's get going. I have watched luxury YouTube for so long, for years and years, way, way before I even dreamt of being able to do my own channel. So what was it like in those days? Well, the very first YouTubers that I ever watched was Chase Amy was definitely one of the very first. Emma, Emma Anders, and she, I think hers was called Bags, Bags, Bags in those days. And then she changed to Emma Anders. Um, I watched quite a few. Minx for All was definitely one of the um, OGs, Jerusha, and even Lydia Millen. I used to love watching Lydia Millen because at that point in time, she was so relatable. Anyway, we'll come on to the luxury YouTubers later, but they were the first ones that I can remember watching. And I watched because <laughs> I do not live near any luxury store. So for me to get to say London, there's a few in Manchester, there's an odd one in Leeds. Um, London is by far the best uh, variety for luxury stores in the UK. And I can't get there that often. So for me, I didn't want to necessarily just buy something online or ask somebody to get something shipped over. I wanted to see it as best as as I could and I know it's not like seeing it in the flesh but if I could see a review online then I'd know at least the sort of thing I was looking for. So one of the first reviews I ever saw on YouTube was from Chase Amy and I was just searching. I wasn't searching on YouTube, I was searching, I was googling any reviews, any information whatsoever about the Chanel Classic Flap because I wanted to go and buy one and I knew I'd have to go to London to buy one but I wanted to be armed with a little bit of information because I was so intimidated to go into stores at that point. And it sounds silly, but that's how I felt at the time. So I was Googling and YouTube channel came up on the search and I watched it, it was Chase Amy and the review was amazing. And I realized after that uh, review that I thought it was the jumbo size that I was after. So it armed me with a little bit of information that when I went to London, I knew what to ask for. I knew what they had available. They might not have had them in stock, but I knew the range at least. And then I could have a look at them. And I did settle on the jumbo and here it is behind me. So I found those sort of videos very, very useful. And I got a little bit addicted, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> as I think we all have done. And I went down a bit of a rabbit hole and I found other YouTubers. And yeah, that's how I met Emma because I was watching um, her channel religiously. And I just loved how it was about the passion of the bag or the luxury item, a review, revealing it, just showing what fits inside it. So you had an idea. Ah, oh, that's great. That fits the mini pochette and your keys and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I just really enjoyed watching it and also seeing the new trends that were coming out, the new styles, the new seasons. I didn't mind watching hauls. I really, really didn't. I quite enjoyed it, <laughs> particularly if it was a luxury haul. I was living vicariously through YouTube channels and it was a lot of fun and it wasn't any harm. Fast forward a little bit and things have changed a lot, haven't they? And from these YouTubers and every single one of them started, if we even if we're talking 12, 13 years ago or that sort of timing, it wasn't somebody's business. It was somebody going online to share their passion. And that's where it started. And then as they became more and more popular and different offers of sponsorships come in, affiliate links come in, the focus then changes from that person, from a passion project into a business. See how the content changed on some, on some YouTubers, not everybody. Some people stayed with it being more of a hobby. It wasn't their full-time career. Some people went into, into a career. And if they went into a career, maybe their mind 
change direction and focus onto maximising revenue, maximising profits, and therefore the content would change. The content would be geared towards pushing you down <laughs> the road of influencing you into clicking the link below and yeah, getting affiliate links through that way or sponsorships. Now, product placement and um, sponsorships are rife, aren't they? They are way, way across all of YouTube and they work by a company coming to you as they've done to me and say, we would like you to promote our product on your channel because they know that our channels go out to, mine doesn't, but millions of people across YouTube millions of people watch these sort of channels and therefore it's very cheap marketing for these massive brands so they will come to one of us and say will you show this product and hopefully somebody will buy it might we'll give you a discount code for your audience it's all a win-win well that person gets paid plus the free product generally and they are contracted to do certain things it may be a certain number of posts or certain things to say in a video, a certain length of time in a video, those types of things. So I'm not saying any of this is bad or good. This is just how things have evolved. And what's happened with the larger YouTubers that have been more successful, they've gone away from just sitting down and talking about certain things that they're passionate about into you now follow their life and their their whole lifestyle, their vlogs. And it can be, and I've talked about this before, <laughs> wandering around your garden and, and then send, selling through your links a load of seeds or <laughs> country gilets or watering cans. It doesn't even matter, does it? But for for that, does it sometimes when the content changes, does that make us as the audience, because I'm still the audience, does it make us think, ah, this person, there's a, an agenda behind this person and they don't love those hair straighteners because last week they were using these certain other hair straighteners or heatless curls or something Dyson air wrap and suddenly the GHD is the best thing since sliced bread. And now, no, that's terrible. This one's better. Oh, look at this, um, <laughs> this makeup. This is the best I've ever used next week. Oh, oh, this is a game changer. This is a game changer. <laughs> I make myself laugh because I always giggle when people say something's a game changer. Anyway, that's just my cynicism coming out. So the content definitely does change. So as a consumer of this type of content, how does this make us feel? Does it influence us to buy a lot of, more of those products because we like the person and because we trust their judgment and we trust that they're giving us an honest and fair review? Or are we going, absolutely not, they're just selling that, next week they'll be selling something else, it can't all be the best thing since sliced bread. So Dale did a video the other day which I thought was brilliant and thought provoking and she was talking about how all this different content off on slightly different angles but across the luxury space, how it can make us as the audience feel and it, you can feel inadequate or you can be influenced and all of these things so it can be a good, a good and bad influence if you like and I suppose part of me thinks well we've got to decide what content we want to consume. And if something makes us feel a certain way because it hits a nerve, don't consume that content. But it's easier said than done. Sometimes we're drawn in, aren't we? We like a bit of guilty pleasure or things like that. But it is very, very true. And it did make me, uh, Dale's video did make me think that not only has YouTube changed, luxury YouTube changed over those years dramatically, but it's also changed the type of, it's not even just the type of content, it's the content matter as well. It's not just how something's presented, like from going from a sit down haul to a, a vlog style and things like that. It's more also talking about the content that people, um, that people produce now. It's about so many more things in their world. It's not just about that luxury bag or this haul of different um, beautiful dresses and everything else. So it's a long time since I've seen any videos which are the what's in my bag videos. I'm not going to lie, they were never my favourites. I 
I've never done one of those videos only because I don't really I didn't really enjoy watching them because I wanted to see what types of things might fit in the bag but I don't want to see necessarily what somebody carries whether it's mints or perfumes or I know what I want to fit in mine and I want to just know if it fits and that's it I don't want chapter and verse on it but a lot of people love those videos I haven't seen one of those for a long time and I don't think people are as interested or they've just been done and it's been and gone I'm not sure um, there's also not as much content based on actual hauls and I think that is a sign of the times as in just the economy um, just how things are for people across the world even that showing all these very very expensive things when people are struggling to pay their bills yeah it can come across a little bit too much for, for some people um, you have to see it for what it is and I think on that basis people don't do as many hauls they might not even be buying as much so they can't do a massive haul um, I still like those videos because I take them for what they are. I take them for the still entertainment, people just sharing their views on things. And if they've gone on a trip and they've bought quite a lot of things all in one place, I want to see it. I'm excited to see it. But that is me coming from where I am in my world. And I understand that everybody um, wants to do that. So what do I think about this all? Well, I don't think there's any good or bad. I think if you guys want to watch somebody who is showing their passion, I suppose somebody like my channel, this is not my career. I would like to build a business from this channel and I'm not gonna lie about that whatsoever. But at this moment in time, this is still a hobby for me. It feels like more than a hobby because I put my heart and soul into it. But in, I suppose, monetary terms, I am not making a living from YouTube. My career is elsewhere. So I sort of still have that it's fun, it's something different, it's something less serious for me. I, I don't have the pressure of that, which I'm very, very, very fortunate to be in that position to do that. But that has made, I suppose, it stay as a passion project for me. It's not something that I feel pressure. I just still really enjoy doing it. Somebody who has built it into their career and their livelihood and maybe their family's livelihood all is encompassed in their YouTube channel and social media projects. I suppose the pressure of keeping that going to the extent that they have to is probably huge on them. And maybe that changes your perspective on the content that they put out and things like that, because yeah, it is, It's it gets into um, the terms of contracts and sponsorships and it's not, necessarily fun anymore and I think for me I don't want this to not be fun but I do want to build a business and I do want to see where I can take this this channel so I suppose that's where I am with this but as I say when it becomes a business for somebody it can become more of a chore that yeah you lose the fun element and also there are and we've talked about this there are so many toxic spaces across YouTube that are definitely there. If you have seen Jerusha's last um, video, oh, I have been talking a little bit with Jerusha and I fully understand where she is. She's been on YouTube the longest of anybody that I have ever followed, I, I believe. She's like 13, 14 years and she has seen everything. She's seen it all, you know, she's seen it, people come and go. She's seen She's not surprised by anything anymore because she has seen it all. She has lived it all. And I do believe that she has just got to the point she is just disillusioned. There is a lot of toxic rubbish that goes on behind the scenes. I'm not going to lie. But I am one of those people that I do my best to stay away from drama, to stay away from anything toxic, stay in my own lane and just keep doing what I believe is the right thing. And that's all I can do. And I don't blame Jerusha at all for wanting a break from YouTube because she's just got to the point where she's just had enough. It's not fun anymore. And I did say to her, when it's not fun anymore, something has to change. Now, it may, it may be that she just needs to refocus, reset, just have a break and then come back fighting. Or it may be that it's not for her anymore and I'd be really sad if she doesn't come back. I think most of us will. But 
you know, Jerusha has to do what is right for her and her family. And yeah, taking a break is what she needs to do right now. But it does show that even the the OGs of this channel of, of YouTube, yeah, you can get disillusioned and just think, I've had enough. It's changed beyond all recognition. It's no fun anymore. Jerusha has other career. She has another career in the background or two or three different businesses. And so she still sees it, that it should be fun and she needs to feel the energy from it and feel that it should be fun you know, and take the pressure off. And there's been so much in her world where it's just, yeah, it's not fun anymore. So it just got me thinking that, yeah, things have changed a lot. I think my channel is back to the old school way of thinking because I think that's how I started watching YouTube. I just enjoyed the reveals and the reviews and the unboxings and those types of things. So yes, every so often I'm going to come on here and tell you how I feel about certain things. But in effect, I am enjoying talking about luxury and I'm going to continue to do it. But I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you think it's changed massively? Do you like the changes? Do you like the, the bigger influencers that have changed their approach? Do you still like to consume that and still like to consume the old style type uh, reviews? What do you think? What do you love? Because I want to make content that you guys love. So let me know. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another one.